I don't know how to start a video, but I'm hootless and I'm going to move my microphone forward a little bit. And this is the next video in the series of videos where I play the slew of games for which I have received keys from developers and continue to receive keys on a near daily basis. Uh, this is Moonlighter, and it's actually the first legitimately good, in every way ticks every box for me game that I have played in this batch. Inline was pretty good as well. I won't, you know, I won't mince words there, and 19.4 was also pretty good, but I feel like it's mostly a curated experience. This is just a game, and it follows the formula of a game that I enjoyed a great deal. Oh, I just, okay, it wasn't giving me the buttons yet. Uh, it follows the formula of a game I enjoyed a lot a long time ago called Reseteer, or Reseteer, Reseteer, I don't I don't know. Everyone pro pronounces it different ways. They also produce it different ways. But, uh, I played, how long? Like, five hours of this game, I would say? Roundabouts? Something like that. And then I lost all of my save progress, and I've been putting off starting it again. But here it is. It's Moonlighter. Uh, for those of you who don't know... Oh my god, I'm getting a lot of potions. This is crazy. Uh, for those of you who don't know... Moonlighter is a game that is split into two two facets of gameplay. The first is what you see here. It's like a dungeon crawling exploration thing. You explore dungeons. You get loot, which is these items here. I'll just quick move those and then look at them in my inventory. So you can see we have four hardened steel, four ancient pots, a vine... Trying not to sneeze. It's so dusty. Uh, four health potion potions, HP potions, one. Uh, two rich jelly, a water lamp. So the first aspect of the game is going through dungeons, looting all of this stuff. You see we get three foundry rests, two fabric. And the second part of the game is going to your shop and selling all of those items. Whoa, okay. All right. Got, like, a ton of lag. I'm just gonna let them kill me. This is a scripted death part. You don't get any benefit from... From, uh... Killing more of them, I don't think. I think on the upside, you do get to keep anything in the top inventory slots. I think this is a cutscene. Cutscene still. Yeah, this guy's gonna come up here. I skipped through the opening dialogue... Uh, before starting the video because it is pretty long and if you've seen any Moonlighter before you would have seen it before and you know It's not really relevant. It's just a story and the story is basically summed up as Guy wants to go and be an adventurer, but also be a merchant in this town and that's basically it So just gonna continue going through this agonizingly slow cutscene and then I believe we do the the shop tutorial here, yeah. Yes, that's right. I want to go in there. Uh, there's four dungeons. The, uh, what are they called? I think it's the forest, the desert. The desert's the third one. I don't remember. There's like a... a stone dungeon one like what you saw right away at the beginning and then there's a foresty one and then a desert one and then I guess a technology one I haven't actually made it that far and from each of them you can go in clear all the levels uh, as much as you want really you can like keep going in there and then there's a boss at the end of each dungeon you can kill the boss once unless they have changed that since last I played I haven't played on the newest versions so I'm not sure uh, I don't, I don't know if they've added in the ability to fight bosses over and over again yet. I, I believe they should, because it's kind of like one of the most interesting things to do in this game is fight the bosses. Otherwise, you just kind of go through the dungeons and then there's nothing, nothing at the end. There's no greater risk for greater reward. But we'll see. Uh, well, I will see. I probably won't do too much of a series on this. I might do a few videos. Like, until I clear the first dungeon. I don't want to spoil too much. 
Uh, this is an experience that is by and large the same every time. Like, it's always the same four dungeons. Uh, the room patterns, there's not a lot of variety. So, and this this will sound like, you know, a detriment. Hey, I would like... I would like to change the price of this. I already understand that it is too much. So yeah, you price the, the things. People come in. They pick up items. And they'll give little faces. There was a smiley face above the person who bought the 100s one. Because she was happy with that price. This dude's gonna be like, what? I'm not paying 200 for that. And then it doesn't let me change it. Because this is a tutorial. But the whole idea of this aspect of the game is trying to find the right price to sell things at. And generally speaking, it doesn't seem like things change around too much. So whatever prices I put for things, you guys can probably put for things and it'll be roughly the same. I think it would be better served by having that also be... Uh, I can't really move around. Uh, it would be better served by that also being somewhat randomized. I can understand some things not being randomized and being, like, generally speaking, more valuable or less valuable. But that kind of brings it back to the, um... That aspect of the game being very similar each time you play it. And it does get a little bit samey, but I feel like it is a very enjoyable game. Even the first time through. And, well, especially the first time through, but even, like, subsequent times through. Because if you enjoy the formula of going, getting loot, coming back, and selling it, then you will enjoy the rest of the game. And I'll go explore the dungeon real quick and, y you know, sell the loot, I guess. Do I have anything in my inventory? I do, I have a few items. Okay. So I will just go grab another, you know, few items, and I'll sell all of the things, and that'll be that. But like I was saying, it's a very enjoyable game the first time through. And if you enjoy it because of the formula where you collect things and sell them rather than, you know, seeing unique things, then you will continue to have a good time. Otherwise, I can see how it would get a little bit samey after a while. And I think it's still very easily fixable. I don't think this game's still in early access, but they seem to still be updating it, so... Who really cares if it's in early access or not? It's kind of an arbitrary title these days. So, overall, I would recommend this game if you are interested in what you see here. Or if you played Reset here and liked it, but didn't like the fact that you had like a timer in which to accomplish everything. Uh, because that was kind of a big aspect of Reset here. Is that you had like a specific number of days that you had to earn the money by, and if you didn't, then it would just fail you. In this, there's no such thing as far as I've been able to tell. It's much more relaxed. I do wish that there was some method by which to uh, to get like inventories of random loot from appropriate dungeons. Like you just pay gold and it gives you an inventory of random loot that will average around like, you know, slightly positive maybe for whatever it costs or just have it be completely random. Sometimes you get nothing but like sticks and vines, other times you get super valuable stuff. Alright, it's gonna make me back here, isn't it? I would like to leave. I would like to leave. Yep, it's this. But I think it's gonna make me portal out. If I remember right. Yeah, put things... Uh, it costs money to go back to the, uh, to the town using this. It's like a uh, hundred or something. 200 gold. It gets more expensive in later dungeons. But like I was saying, I think it would be really cool to have some kind of option for automatically getting loot. And then you can just focus on just the shop aspect if you want. It would be nice to have that option. But as it is, it's still a pretty fun game. Yep, more cutscene. I've already seen this. It's just like, you went into the dungeon, don't go into the dungeon. It's the golem dungeon, by the way. Go away, Xenon. I want to sell the things. Yeah, that's the billboard at which you can upgrade things, like the shop, and you can buy extra shops around town, which is what these are, so you can get specific things uh, at certain points in the game. 
And they're just extra shops around town that you can go to. But here's the shop. Uh, you can do this. I'll just adjust that down to 100 because we know 100 is a good price. This, I believe, is like 30. Uh, I don't really remember the prices for anything else. I'll put vine in for like two. And roots as well for like two. And then we'll start the day. And that'll be that. I actually like pretty much specifically bought a controller so that I could play this, be I think, because uh, I started playing it with a Steam controller and I was like, this will not do. So now I have an Xbox 360, or an Xbox One controller, I think, specifically, is what I got. So she's happy with the crystallized energy thing now. Uh, the homeboy is super happy with the roots being two gold a piece, so I'll have to increase the prices there. 30 gold was the right price for iron bars. You can try to squeeze extra money out of people because it's not like hard numbers. Well, it is hard numbers, but you can be a little bit flexible. There's a higher price tier if I go in here. Uh, between, I can't scroll over to it, but there's the like gold coin eyes. That means that they're getting like a really good bargain on it. So they're like super happy about it, but you don't get nearly as much as it's worth. The uh, regular smiley face is like the perfect price range for an item and that means that they'll pay for it they won't be unhappy but they won't be happy it'll stay exactly the same the uh like slight frown is they will pay for it but they aren't happy about paying for it and that'll decrease the uh the market demand for that item i believe and then it'll be worth less in the future even for the the regular smiley face option and then the super down face is that it's so overpriced that they won't even like consider buying it so generally speaking, you want to try and keep inside of the regular smiley face, obviously. Because, you know, you want to get as much as possible for it without them getting too good of a deal or too bad of a deal. And it's a nice little balancing act. So I'll place up, uh, let's place more roots. And this was a really good deal at two each. So let's go to like four each and maybe that'll give us a slightly better indicator. And toss up the water sphere for like two hundo. I don't remember how much most of these things are worth. I just remembered the iron because I sold so much of it in my first playthrough. Alright, so vines, appropriately priced. Give me that tiny amount of gold. Roots also now appropriately priced. Uh, he is super not happy about the water sphere being two hundred though. Let's drop it to one hundred. Grab one of these hardened steels, throw it up for like 200. Might as well sell the rest of these vines. Why not, right? We found a good price for them. All right, and this is this is the entire game. Uh, it's exploring dungeons like I did at first and getting loot and progressively you get better loot as you go through the dungeons and then you take the loot and you sell it here and you make more money for more valuable things. The villagers never seem to be, like, unhappy about spending tons of money for things that are worth tons of money. They just have endless supplies of money, apparently. So, Hardened Steel was way too good of a deal at 200. Let's increase that to, like, 350. And that'll be good. And we'll place these down as well, these vines. She was pretty happy about the vines as well. Two apiece seems to do it just fine for those. That guy's now happy about the water sphere. So whatever price I set that to, I think it was uh, 200 or 100. So 100 is about the point where we will get the best deal. That guy's now happy with 350 for the hardened steel. So we know that we can throw down the rest of the hardened steel for 350 apiece. There's also a uh, crafting aspect to this game where you can make better equipment than your existing sword, shield, armor, etc. And it is super necessary to do that if you want to make progress because things hit really hard later on and you need to build armor so you have more health and you need to build weapons so you can kill them in a reasonable time. And that takes the stuff that you could sell. So it's kind of like a balancing act, like how quickly do you want to upgrade your equipment versus how much do you need the money now, that kind of thing. We'll throw up the water sphere for another 100. Actually, I'll increase that to like 120 and see if they're willing to pay that. Sell the vines and... I don't want to deal with selling 
the ancient pot or the teeth stone right now because I it's getting later on in the day and I don't want to get halfway through price negotiation for those things. All right, so she's happy about 350 each for two of the hardened steel. We get 700 total. Not bad, not bad. She's still happy about the 120 for the water sphere. So now we can take a look in here. Uh, where is it? That's not the right tab. Uh, water sphere is right here. Now we can see that the happy price is 120 instead of 100 because we have that new data and it shows you the best possible deal still inside of that range. So instead of telling us that they'd be happy with 100, it's like, you know what, they'll be happy with 120 because it's still a good enough price and it'll always be roughly the same. I don't think individual people have different wants and desires that raise or lower that. So we know that 120 is going to be a good deal on water spheres and we can continue to use that price in the future. We could even bump it up more if we want, but we start to get into a dangerous territory where we like tow that line between, uh, you know, charging them enough that they're happy for it and you get money versus they're not happy for it and then it hurts the whole demand and then you have to recalibrate the prices. All right, so I'll sell that and then I'll kick everyone out. Hold the closed shop. And then we get a, uh, a balance sheet here, what we sold, how much we sold it for, and how many of each thing we sold. Sold 42 vines, not bad. Overall, pretty good. Uh, we had 100 gold after the end of that first dungeon run, even though we had to cut it super short because of the forced teleport out. And now we have 2100 gold, so, you know, you, you just keep doing that, and that's the entirety of the game, essentially. So, if you're into this kind of thing, you're going to be into this kind of thing, like I am. I am very pleased with this game formula. I just wish that there was a little bit more to do, but I'm sure that they will add more to do as time goes on. So, uh, yeah, the link to this game will be in the description. As always, I will try to remember to do that at least. And hopefully you guys all enjoyed watching this little, this little like, view of the beginning of Moonlighter. And I'll see you guys all next time, just as soon as I can free my mouse from this window. Alright, I'll see you guys all next time.